Good morning. I hope that you each had a great fall break and are ready for the rest of the semester. Today we're going to talk about section 3.1 and about parabolas. Now as we begin working with parabolas, each instructor may be a little different as to what they ask on test and how they want their students to show their work. So please be sure that you talk with your instructor to see what he or she expects for parabolas from their students. Let's look at number one. So part A, we have a parabola. in what I believe is called standard form. So what we look at, or what I always tell my students first, is to think about the vertex. And I make a table. I ask my students to graph five different points. When our parabola is in this standard form, the vertex we can find by looking at the opposite of what's with the x. So here, our x would be three, and then we also look at the number that's at the end, which is 1, and that's our y value. Then I ask my students to find two points to the left of the vertex. So I need two numbers less than 3, so I might plug in 2 or 1. And then I need two numbers greater than 3, so 4 and 5. And I plug in each of those values. So I plug in 1 for x. One minus three is negative two. Negative two squared is negative four. Two times negative four is negative eight plus one would be negative seven. Then plug in two for x. Or plug in two for x. Two minus three is negative one. And I made a mistake up here. When you square a negative, this should be positive. So that would be two times four is eight plus one is nine. So this y coordinate would be nine rather than negative seven. I apologize for that mistake. Negative one squared is positive one. Two times one is two plus one is three. Plug in four for x. One squared is one. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. And then plug in 5 for x. Five minus three is two. Two squared is four. Two times four is eight plus one is nine. Now earlier when I made the mistake, if you remember, I had negative seven here. As I finished up looking at my points, I would have known that is incorrect. Because if you notice, if we're the same distance from our vertex, so here we are one away, those y values are the same. And here, we are two away from that vertex, and those y values are the same. That just gives students a way to check themselves. Now, by the way, this parabola does open up because we've got a positive in front of that squared term. And then get ready to graph. And so my vertex is the point three, one. And I'm gonna label that with the V for the vertex. We've got the point two, three, and four, three. 
and then one nine and five nine. Make sure when you connect your points, you have a U and not a V shape. And there's the graph of the parabola. Now, a couple of other things that you may see students ask to complete. Uh, one would be the domain and the range. So the domain here is negative infinity to infinity. The negative infinity comes from the arrow on the left side of the graph, which means it keeps on coming out to the left. And the positive infinity comes from the right side of the graph. There's a right arrow on the right side of the graph, and that means it keeps on going out to the right. And this is a graph that's continuous. You never have to pick up your pencil. Um, there's no break, there's no gaps, there's no jumps there. Our range will always go either from the vertex up or the vertex down, depending on whether the parabola opens up or down. This parabola goes up, and so we start at the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is 1, and it keeps going up, so that would be to infinity. Math Labs is going to ask students about increasing and decreasing. Think about pushing a marble along this graph. And if I start pushing my marble along that graph, I'm gonna push it in orange. Notice that we're going down from left to right. And so from the left side, that would be negative infinity, to the vertex, that marble goes down. But at that vertex, the marble turns and it goes back up. And so from the vertex, the x-coordinate is 3. The rest of the graph to infinity is where that marble goes up. You also think about the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that goes through the vertex. It divides that parabola in half. A vertical line is an x equal, and the x coordinate of the vertex is 3. So you'll notice we've used the x coordinate of the vertex in several places. This is the x of the vertex, and we also used it in the increasing and decreasing. Students might also be asked to find the x-intercepts and the y-intercept. Now the x-intercept, remember, is where the graph crosses the x-axis. And notice that this graph never crosses the x-axis, so this one has no x-intercepts. And to find the y-intercept, we plug in 0 for x. Zero minus three is negative three. Negative three squared is nine. Two times nine is 18, plus one would be 19. And so our y-intercept here would be the point zero, 19. Now, let's look at part B. This parabola is going to open down because of the negative in front of that x squared. I tell my students with parabolas, again, you need to find five points. This one is in general form, and so to find the vertex, we use the formula x equals negative b over 2a. b is whatever is in front of the x, so here negative 2, and a is in front of the x squared, so negative 1. Negative and a negative makes a positive 2, and on bottom we'd have negative 2, and so our x coordinate would be negative 1. And plug in negative 1 everywhere that there's an x. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. 
and negative 1 plus 2 plus 8 should be 9. And again, I tell my students when we're graphing to choose two points to the left of the vertex and two points to the right of the vertex, but talk with your instructor to see what they expect from their students with parabolas. Two points left of the vertex are smaller than negative one, would be negative two and negative three for the x. And two points to the right of the vertex are two x values to the right, greater than negative one would be zero and one. So I'm going to plug in negative 3 for x. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. Bring down the negative that's in front of that parenthesis. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. And then 6 plus 8 is 14 minus 9 would be 5. Plug in negative 2 for x. Bring down the negative in front of the parenthesis, and negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. And when I add these together, negative 4 plus 4 is 0, plus 8 would be 8. Plug in 0 everywhere that there's an x. And that's going to give us 8. Notice again that these points that are both one away from the vertex, that y coordinate was the same. And then last, plug in 1 for x. Bring down the negative, 1 squared is 1, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, plus 8 is 5. And once again, notice that when we were 2 away, the same distance from the vertex, those y values were the same. And now we're ready to plot our points and graph. Our vertex was the point negative 1, 9. I'm going to put a V with that vertex to help me remember that's the vertex. We had the point 0, 8 and negative 2, 8. And then we had the point negative 3, 5 and negative 1, 5. Connect your points and make sure you have a U shape here. And there's the graph of our parabola. Our domain, once again, is negative infinity to infinity. For these parabolas that open up and down, that domain will always be negative infinity to infinity. It's because of the, the parabolas are continuous. There's no holes, no breaks, no gaps. They have an arrow on the left side of the graph and an arrow on the right side of the graph. For the range, this one we start from bottom to top. We have the arrows that point down. That's going to be negative infinity because those arrows are going to keep going down, 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 and down. And then the graph goes up to 9. That is the y-coordinate of the vertex. The range will always use that y of the vertex. If the parabola points down, it will be negative infinity to the y of the vertex. And if the parabola opens up, it will be that y-coordinate of the vertex to infinity. 
Math Labs is going to ask about increasing and decreasing. And think about pushing a marble along this graph. And so if I start at the left side and I push the marble along the graph, notice that that marble is going to go up. So the left side of the graph is negative infinity. And the graph keeps going up until I get to the x of the vertex, which is negative 1. And at the x of the vertex, then the marble starts going down. So from negative 1 to infinity, because we're thinking about going out to the right, even though that marble is going down, the x values are getting larger. So we use the x of the vertex in the increasing and the decreasing. Our axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. It's a vertical line. And a vertical line is an x equal, and our vertex here has an x coordinate of negative 1. And so this would be x equals negative 1. And so again, we use the x of the vertex. Let's think about that y-intercept first. For the y-intercept, we plug in 0 for x. If you go back and look at our table, when we plugged in 0 for x, Notice that we got out 8 for y. And so our y-intercept is the point 0, 8. To find the x-intercept, we plug in 0 for y. And remember, f of x is the same thing as y. I'd rather factor with my x squared is positive. So you have a couple of options here. I'm going to go ahead and divide every term by negative 1 to make that x term positive, that x squared term positive. So that makes a positive x squared, a positive 2x, and a minus 8. Draw your two parentheses. We need an x and an x, a plus and a minus and plus 4 and minus 2 to make a middle term of 2x and a constant of negative 8. Set each factor equal to 0. And we get that x is negative 4 when we subtract 4 from both sides and x is 2. And so this one has two x-intercepts. We write the x-intercepts as a point. So the first one would be the point negative 4, 0, and the second one would be the point 2, 0. If you have questions about parabolas, let me know. Otherwise, have a great week.